In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can make classical buildings in Blender. You're going to learn how we can create highly detailed classical walls with simple modeling techniques as well as new tricks when it comes to texturing and arraying. There is also an extended tutorial explaining my full process linked in the description. So if you're interested in all this, stick around, consider subscribing, and let's get on with it. Okay, firstly, what do we need to know before diving into making these classical buildings? Well, classical is a very broad term when we're describing its architectural style. It defines building designs derived all the way from the origins of ancient Greek to the ages of Rome and even the Italian Renaissance. There are many different types of classical design, however they all have a common vocabulary of decorative and constructive elements. This is important to know because different types of design can introduce unique challenges when it comes to modeling and reconstructing in 3D. For example, ancient Greek structures introduced formalized characteristics of tall sculpted pillars, large structures, and symmetric decoration. On the other hand, Gothic styles of classical design contain more complex details broken up by overlaid tracery. And beyond these, there are countless of other classical variations from Baroque to neoclassical and Palladian architecture. So when we're recreating these styles, it's important to remain true and consistent to the chosen design. Because of this, I strongly recommend gathering references of a particular style so you have a very good idea of the common elements to recreate. For the purposes of this video, and my example, I will be taking a look at recreating this picture that I took in Milan. The building's architecture is classical and defined as a Liberty style. They have decorative art on many exterior building parts such as windows, arches, roofs, and columns. So let's finally get into it. In Blender, the easiest method to reconstruct a building wall or facade is to focus on creating one section called a module and later on efficiently duplicating it and adding slight variations to each floor. For our one section, we're going to construct a unique window frame and any structural elements surrounding it. We'll start by adding a cube and scaling it to the correct proportions of a window wall. Be sure to leave lots of space for the decorative elements around and above. Then we'll add four edge loops making our base window. For some of these actions, it might be smart to enable snapping so we have accurate controllable increments. From here, we'll extrude our window face inwards before adding more edge loops defining the window frames, then further extruding the window itself. Now we'll work on detailing the window edge and frame. Do this by adding different loop cuts to the frame, then selecting each face loop and extruding them out differently. The idea is to create complex classical style geometry by different level of extrusions casting shadows and detail. Now let's quickly model all the extruding structures, starting with the bottom stool. Within edit mode, we'll add a stretch cube for the bottom and then, like before, add edge loops selecting and extruding them from normals. Beveling some edges smooth can also give it that classical design. Under the stool, we can model the apron support by yet again another cube that's extruded and inset in different areas. For the window sides and head casing, we we'll use the same ideas with the new cubes and extrusions. It really is just about spending time reconstructing from your references, cube by cube. It's easy, but just takes a while to get a complete looking structure that has good design. Here's a useful tip. Select an edge loop, control B to bevel, Confirm and then open up the bevel settings window. You can then set the bevel width and then next to profile type choose custom. Now you can customize the bevel profile to introduce sharp curves with stylish edges as a classical element. This is a really quick and easy way to bevel detail out of nothing. And you can even keep the custom effect for all future bevels. Now, creating those detailed ornaments and decorative structures is all of a skill on its own and requires a lot of experience in model work, tracing, sculpting, and design. From what I've gathered, one way to do it would be to have an ornamental design as reference, then trace the element with curves and paths. We could then give the curve geometrical depth and similarly customize its profile structure to be classically unique. Now, I should mention there are many great free assets on the internet providing high quality ornaments. I'll link the ones I used below. Let's move on to texturing. Most of classical buildings will have a beige color or ranging from yellow to white. Now you can just select one base color, but I recommend using image textures as it allows for more textural detail. Specifically, textures.com has hundreds of usable images for free that contain large spaces of empty walls with brick outlines and crevices. I'll link the textures I use below. You can also plug the base image texture into the bump node and connect it to normals. That way you'll get bump detail as well. You'll notice most of the added cubes that were scaled have stretched textures. All you need to do is select them all and cube project. Play around with the UV until everything looks right. Right now the wall looks too clean though. Classical buildings have been here for hundreds of years and look more grungy and old. Here's a quick tip to add that kind of realism. Create a dark diffuse shader and maybe even use a grungy dark image texture. Mix it with the original wall shader and add in an ambient occlusion node. This node defines the darker areas and can exaggerate shadows. We we'll use that shadow information as the mix factor. Control it better with a color ramp and as you can see, things look immediately more realistic. For the windows, try to use an image texture as well. I found this one free online and works perfectly for the frame and curtains. You don't even need to set up glass materials if the window image looks good enough. Okay, let's finally get on to duplicating and making an actual building. I used the array modifier to duplicate my module to the side for many rows. Here's also where you can customize different modules with structural variations for each floor. It makes for a much more unique building. 
From there, we keep adding detail, for example, by adding columns. By creating a cube that's inset and extruded, we can array that upwards to create a column and break up the bland wall and add depth. Corners, you can extrude face loops inwards if that makes it look good. The building top and edge is often very detailed with stylized support structures. I added a separate cube with the same material and sort of kitbashed all the decorative elements, made some of my own, used the array modifier again, and soon enough, I had a complete classical building with stylized windows, columns, and edges. So that's been a quick look at creating classical buildings. This video will be very very relevant for future tutorials and similar projects coming soon. Do consider subscribing so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.